Marty Stauffer is the man responsible for the PBS documentary series Wild America, which was one of the most popular programs in the world during its 12-season run. Despite the popularity of the program and the impact its original run had on subsequent nature-themed documentary shows, Marty Stauffer isn't heard from much anymore. Join Factsverse as we explore why you don't see Marty Stauffer from Wild America these days. From 1982 to 1994, the documentary series Wild America aired on PBS and was considered one of the most popular shows of its time. Marty Stouffer created the series and was inspired by his own real-life experiences. He's always been a nature lover and a filmmaker, and it was a magic moment when he realized he could put both of these loves together and find success. Marty's journey started in September of 1948. He was born in a small Arkansas city called Fort Smith and grew up with a strong predilection for both hunting and fishing. Alongside his brothers, Marty could be found hunting and fishing from an early age. One of those brothers was Mark Stouffer, who would go on to help Marty with his future endeavors quite a bit. These brothers were lucky enough to have access to an 8mm camera and it wasn't long before they got their idea to combine their passion for the outdoors with their new hobby of filming things. While Marty and his brothers did plenty of filming with their 8mm as children, it wasn't until his college years he truly got inspired to take his filmmaking endeavors seriously. During the later 60s, Marty went on a journey with two college friends to Alaska, where they spent a whole summer hunting and fishing in the wilderness. During this journey, Marty used his old 8mm camera to film some professional-looking footage of what he was up to. When he returned home, he assembled it into a feature-length documentary that he played for his fellow students, as well as other people around Fort Smith. The film was well-received, and Marty quickly realized he was onto something. Marty has always loved Aspen, Colorado. Marty had ambitions of becoming a wildlife documentarian, but he still had to pay the bills. As a result, he could be found working a few different jobs before eventually going full-time with filmmaking. While on a summer break from college in 1968, Marty ventured to Aspen, Colorado with a friend, as the two had been offered a construction gig there. Marty eventually would go on to call Aspen his home, though not before taking a regrettable gig with a safari company in Africa that he later called traumatizing. He graduated from college in 1970, and it was at this point that the nature-loving, aspiring documentarian decided he needed to get some hours in around the globe. Due to his experience in the wilderness, he was able to secure a position with a safari company functioning out of Botswana, Africa. During his time, Marty was tasked with killing many African creatures, and he claims he came to feel pretty bad about it after doing it for a while. Marty eventually quit his gig, though not before securing some footage of his time amongst the African wildlife. This time, Marty collected footage on 16mm film instead of 8mm. But this increase in film size didn't make him any more satisfied with the product. According to Marty, attempting to assemble this African footage together into a feature-length documentary made him realize he only wanted to film wildlife in the USA. He has claimed American wildlife is what the TV audience wanted to see, and the success of Wild America proved him right. He returned to Aspen and began filming bighorn sheep. Marty allegedly spent two years putting together a short documentary feature on the creatures, and it was during this time he got the idea to make Aspen his permanent residence. This was in 1973, and big things awaited soon after. Before we tell you more about that, be sure to give this video a like, and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Marty Stouffer's Early Television Successes After moving to Aspen, Marty devoted himself full-time to creating wildlife documentaries. His first big success came in 1977 when one of his documentaries aired on NBC. It was called The Predators, and Marty was able to secure movie star Robert Redford as its narrator. The documentary was a hit, and it wasn't long after its airing that ABC came knocking on Marty's door looking for their own nature documentary to compete with NBC's. Marty created a documentary for ABC focused on the documentarian's time raising a grizzly bear cub. He had raised it in his apartment in Aspen before releasing it into the wild. The documentary aired on ABC in 1978 and was narrated by Henry Fonda. Between these two documentaries, Marty became a pretty big deal in the entertainment industry. Several networks came knocking at his door, but it ended up being PBS that he developed a lasting relationship with. In 1982, the documentary series Wild America first aired on PBS. The series represented the culmination of all that Marty Stauffer had attempted to do with his documentary filmmaking up until that point. 
Unsurprisingly, the show was a big hit. It lasted for 12 seasons, yielding 120 half-hour-long episodes, as well as a dozen one-hour-long TV specials. Wild America was also loosely adapted into the 1997 film of the same name, which starred Home Improvement's Jonathan Taylor Thomas in the role of a young Marty. The film was a dramatization of Marty and his brother's early experiences that led to Marty going on to create his hit series. Wild America was eventually usurped in popularity. Although Wild America ended in 1994, the show lived on through syndication deals for many years before slowly being usurped in popularity by competing nature documentary series. According to Marty, he has hours and hours of footage he's filmed in the past few decades, but there's no one who wants to give him the money to edit it all together. It seems the entertainment world is content with the 120 episodes of Wild America that already exist. Marty spends much of his time nowadays attempting to preserve the original episodes. He started up a crowdfunding campaign a few years back to try to secure money he wanted to use to convert the 120 original episodes into 4K, though the campaign wasn't successful. One of the things Marty blames for no longer being able to get funding for his documentaries is the fact that so many other production companies have created derivative works. It seems that Marty has the biggest problem with National Geographic. According to him, the brand outright stole the essence of his esteemed documentary series when creating much of the television content it's known for today. Marty claims National Geographic approached him many years back to attempt to get the Wild America brand, and Marty didn't relent. It seems the National Geographic brand then decided it would take matters into its own hands and simply ape Marty's style. Of course, it's hard to copyright the simple idea of going out into the wild and filming what you see. Though Marty claims National Geographic has ripped him and his works off in a much deeper way than this. He ended up having so much of a problem he sued National Geographic. Though many might look at his lawsuit and say it was slightly frivolous, National Geographic had created many television programs featuring names that were certainly very derivative of Wild America. Such programs included Untamed Americas and Surviving Wild America. It's not hard to look at the names of these programs and come to the assumption National Geographic was trying to cash in on the TV audience's goodwill towards Marty's Wild America, especially given the context that they had previously tried to buy it. But the judge ended up deciding in favor of National Geographic. We may hear from Marty Stauffer again. Although not much is heard from Marty Stauffer nowadays, it's not for the nature-loving documentarian's lack of trying. He said he's focused on trying to convert the many episodes of Wild America into digital shorts more suited for today's audiences. He's also trying to get new projects off the ground, though it seems unlikely Marty will ever get funding to complete editing on the many hours of footage he claims to have filmed since Wild America came to an end in 1994. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you remember watching Wild America? What was your favorite animal you saw? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.